React is getting used more than ever before. It's super popular and especially compared to Angular and Vue, it's definitely far ahead. And it's also not just NPM download numbers. If we take a look at the state of JavaScript 2022 survey, we can confirm that React is super popular amongst JavaScript developers, even though it's slightly dropped in popularity since 2019, 2020. The latest major version of React, React 18, was released roughly a year ago. And therefore the question is, what's the current state of React. Now let's start with a quick win. Hooks are standard. Actually, to be fair, not just since this year, but they have been the standard in 2021 and 2022 as well. You can still use class-based components and it's probably not going anywhere. You can stick to that approach if you like, but hooks are definitely the default and most projects you find, most examples you find use hooks. But of course, React hooks were introduced back in React 16.8, not in version 18. Instead, React 18 was all about concurrent features, formerly known as concurrent mode. To be precise, React 18 did introduce two important new hooks, use transition and use deferred value, which ultimately are both tools you can use to give your website users a better perceived performance, to avoid blocking UI states and ensure smooth UI updates and changes. And belonging to the same category of changes, React 18 also added new capabilities to suspense, which is a component you can wrap around your components to show a fallback whilst you're waiting for code to download in case of lazy loading or data to be fetched. Though this suspense for data fetch feature is still in experimental mode and not that easy to implement from scratch on your own. Instead, it's much easier if you use libraries that integrate with it, like React Query or Facebook's Relay package, but even those packages mention that it's still in experimental mode and not stable and ready for production yet. So these React 18 features exist to give you tools to improve the perceived performance of the React app you're building. Using these tools, however, is non-trivial. It's certainly doable for a big company like Meta with hundreds or thousands of engineers, after all, they built React. But if you are working on your own or in a smaller team, these features will maybe not be that helpful to you. And it's also pretty clear to see that Meta, so Facebook, in the end built all these features for themselves and they then rolled it out to the public once they tested it internally, which of course generally is a good approach, but which also makes it seem like you're only getting features that Meta or Facebook needs. But there also is one other exciting initiative taken by the React team and that would be server components. Server components were first announced at the end of 2020 and the idea behind them is that you can have some components that only run on the server and never reach the client. Therefore you can perform server-side logic in them like reach out to a database and you ship less client-side code to your users which is amazing and that generally is a huge trend. Server components are actually still not stable, still experimental, but Next.js 13, for example, uses them in their new feature, which is also not finished and also not stable yet, that allows you to build more complex full stack applications and that allows you to move more code on the server. So the current state of React is of course still that we have a library that's there to build front end user interfaces. And that's always what React will do, but enriched with more backend capabilities or combined with meta frameworks like Next.js or Remix that allow us to build such full stack applications. Because as I also mentioned in my phases of JavaScript framework evolution video, we moved more and more code to the client side, adding more and more complexity to the client side and more code that must be downloaded by our users. And now this trend is reversing and we're building full stack apps again. And we need frameworks that simplify the process of building these full stack apps while still being able to build these rich, highly interactive user interfaces. So React is not going anywhere. It's more important than ever, but it's also more important than ever to learn a meta framework like Next.js or Remix or Next for Vue if you're using that or look into Analog.js for Angular if you're into that to move more code back from the client onto the server. And that trend of going back to the server for certain tasks has a couple of important implications. It, for example, means simpler client-side code, less use state and less use effect less Redux usage because there is less state to manage on the client side and less side effects to run if you're doing more work on the server again. For example, in my Remix course, where I teach you this amazing framework, there's no use state and no use effect call in the entire final project we built because we have all that logic 
on the server side. So that's the state of React. You're getting tools to build better user interfaces that are non-blocking, that feel reactive, that are responsive. And at the same time, we get more tools around React. We get all these meta frameworks like Next and Remix that allow us to simplify our React apps and that leverage React for the front end, but also make it easier for us to build full stack applications and move logic back onto the server, ultimately leading to simpler React apps. So should you stop learning React? No not at all. It's that foundation for the next evolution phase.